Hello guys and you're welcome back. In our last couple of lessons we looked at Python classes and looked at the object-oriented programming paradigm. We looked at some basic examples using encapsulation and we saw a PowerPoint presentation where I broke down what the key terminologies and definitions are using Python. You can find access to these file links and if you want quick access to the lessons you can check out the pointers right here that can show you these lessons. So today what we're going to do is to work on an example using object-oriented programming. Basically, we'll not be looking at more definitions. So right here, I'll just create a new file. I'll just call that one 21. I'll just say a OOP examples.py. So basically, we'll be looking at a couple of examples on how we can create uh, object-oriented programs. So what I'll do is to create a class called baking because since we actually use the uh, dough example to discuss our classes, let's create a class called baking. And the first thing to do when you create a class is to add a comment so that uh, a document string so that you actually understand what that class is doing. And this is just an example. An example class uh, showcasing object-oriented programming. So that's just what our class is doing. So uh, let's just go ahead. So let's create our init method. Our init method. And this is going to be our constructor. So we'll say def underscore init double underscores and we'll open our curly braces. We'll pass in the first argument that is required for every method called self, especially when you're working with an object-oriented program, and we'll create these variables. So I'm going to create a name for a baking item that has been baked, a cost, and a color. So I'll just say color like so, and I'll uh, rub this down like so. And what I need to do is to put this uh, quotes, and I can actually say uh, self dot name equals name self dot cost equals name then my cost I'll just say self dot cost equals cost and then I'll say self dot color equals the color so I have my name I have my cost and my color I'll also use another Dondo method called the str method, which is going to help us display and format our output. So again, I'll pass in the parameter self, such that when we create the instance of that class, it's going to know which instance we are talking about. And what this does is just to display the output of our pastry objects. I'll just call them instances this time around because it's quite the same ter terminology. So what I'll do is to return. And if I have a lot of things I'm returning, I like to use uh, parentheses to display them. You don't need to, but it's quite important. And I'll use an F string. So I want to get the name of the cake, the cost and the cake color. So what I'll do is to return that when we run the str. So I'll just say cake uh, name. And I'll just display the self dot name. This is the instance that's going to get the name of the object when we eventually create it. And then the cost. And I'll return the self dot cost. And then finally, what I'm going to pass on again, I'll, I'll just get rid of this. I don't need this uh, colon here. And then I'll place this for the cost. And then finally, let's place the last one for our color. So I'll just say cake color, like so. And I'll just get the self dot color. Again, we haven't started uh, using this class because we haven't created the instance yet. So what I want to do is to look at this baking product like a company. You have a customer that will come and order cakes, and then that customer will have a receipt when they purchase a cake. So let's create a function for the customer. So I'll just get a customer name. 
something like so. And I'll pass in the self keyword. And let's create our variables. So I'll just say customer name. And then I'll also get the customer address, like so. And here, I'm going to show the customer name and address. So I'll just do a method, I'll just say shows the customer name and address. So that's what the customer name function does. So I'll just say self dot customer name equals the customer name. Now there's a big mistake right here. Don't use the function name. So I'll just use the customer name in lower case just to differentiate that. And that's how I can tell this is a variable. So uh, so let's keep moving. So for the customer address, I'll just say self dot customer address underscore equals to my customer address there. And finally, I'm just going to print out an F string that has my uh, customer name. And I'll return the self dot customer name. I'll use this one, I'll use the customer name and then the address I'll just see self dot customer address just like that and let's close our curly brace so we don't have errors when we run this and also what we need to do is get the uh, receipt so that we can also print out the received for each purchase a customer does. So we'll just see deft, uh, I'll just make this one line. I'll just say received or received number. So this is going to have a self and I'll pass in the variable called received and I'm simply going to print out the received number using an F string. So I'm just going to say received number. And this is going to get the self dot received. Oops. Like so. So we've actually done creating our basic uh, class. So what we actually do now is to create the cake objects. So the first one, I'll just create a variable called velvet. And I'm going to call baking, which is the main class. And I'll pass in the type of cake. So I'll say cupcake. So we're actually creating the instances of our class now. And then the cost is going to be an integer 25. And actually notice how it highlights and tells you that this is, could be any the other type. So it could be a string, an int. I'm just going to pass in a, uh, I can even do 25.99. So it's actually a float now. And then it's asking for the color of the cake. I'm just going to say red. So we can actually print out velvet right now. That's not how I spelled. <laughs> I made a mistake here. Aha, uh -huh, that's it. So let's just save this and run and see what output we get right now. So you said uh, cake name. We have cupcake. This cupcake. This is the cost, and then the color is actually red. So it's actually returning that uh, object we created right now. So what we're actually going to do is to create the customer name. So I'm going to say uh, velvet dot. So I'll get the customer name like so. And then I'll pass in the name of a customer and then pass in the address too. So it's asking me for the customer name right here. So I'll just say uh, Peter Francon. And then the address, I'm just going to say uh, 
New Jersey, like so, and then let's print out the receipt. And that's a receipt number. And I'll just pass in any default uh, numbers right here that represent the uh, receipt. So that's the class above called the baking class. And whoops, we actually have a problem here. So it says it has no attribute customer name. Did you mean customer name? So let's actually see what we did right there. So for my receipt, So first, whenever we have errors like this, it's good to know where that line is. So I'll just run this again, and I want to find out the line where that error, error actually happened. So it's on line 17. Next, so we're having a problem with line 17. And it says, uh, baking object has no attribute customer underscore name. Did you mean customer name? And it's actually getting the error from self.customer underscore name. So let's actually see what we did right there that made this program kind of angry right now. So I'll jump over to line 17 and just scroll up a bit. So we actually have customer underscore name here. Ah, so this is it. So I forgot the underscore right here and that's why it was complaining heavily. So I actually understood that the problem came from line 17, but it was from 16. So let's save this and let's run our program again. And it says a uh, baking object has no attribute receipt. Did you mean receipt number? So we're actually at line 20 and line 25. So let's see line 20. So we have self and receipt. So I need to create the instance first before I can reference this. So I'll just need to see self dot Received equals received, and it's actually a good thing these errors are happening live, so we can actually see and understand that you know when these problems occur, how we can actually uh, take steps to solve them. So uh, let me just clear the screen, CLS, and we can just quickly run that again. So here it's actually running fine now. So because we have one instance we can create another first uh, second instance. So this is our first of uh, baking class. I created an instance called object. Let's look at another quick. So I'll create another object called cupcake. It's going to be from baking. And as soon as I open that first parentheses, it's asking me about the name. So I'll just type in the name and say, uh, Cupcake is asking me for the cost. I'll say this is a 40.99p and it's asking me for the color. I'll just say white and I'll just uh, yet print out uh, cupcake dot the customer who bought cupcake. So I'm just going to say customer name and I'll say Abby. And then the customer's address, I'll just say Milton Keynes. So shout out to all my peeps from Milton Keynes. And then what I'm going to do finally is just to print out the uh, receipt. So I'll just say cupcake dot, and we can have access to these. So I'll say receipt number, and I'll just say 001. So that's a uh, cupcake dot received number. I'll see two, two, one, two, three, like that. And we'll just save this. So if we run this program, we should actually see uh, these two instances being produced and created right here. Now, this is a nice example. And when you're working with objects and classes, you should have this kind of uh, mindset that uh, when you're working with them, you need to kind of like look at what you're trying to recreate in the real world. So uh, another common example is when you actually, uh, when you're building a game, like so, when you're actually building a game, you'd actually see these things you know, appear all the time as well. Let's look at a, a quick, another second example that shows us how we can implement 
that same thing as well but this time around we'll use some uh, inheritance and I'll just show you how that uh, inheritance works in the second example so let's create a uh, we can use this class but I just want this to be a fresh example so what I'll do is just create a new one so I'll say control N and I'll do a control S and I'll just call this uh, player class.py so we can have a fresh uh, example and I'll just save that as I'll use 22 so these could uh, actually appear sequentially after 21 so I want to create a class called player and in this player class I'm going to have an init method now sometimes Python automatically does this for you to uh, auto completion sorry in Visual Studio Code so uh, it's actually a good thing but I would like uh, like to create this you know manually so first I have the self and I'll pass in the name of my player sorry this is in the self after the self comma so I'll say name and then I'll pass in the player health as well so each player is going to have a name and a health and we'll just say self.name equals name and we'll say self dot health equals health like so so let's create another class and this second class is going to inherit from the first class so I'm just going to say class player 2 and it's going to inherit from player so basically all the functions which I just have one function right here I don't need to recreate this again because it's going to inherit from the player class so let's move on so first I'll have my init method let's not forget our double underscores and I'll pass in myself keyword the name the health and I'll add another variable called controller I want to check if the controller is connected to the system so what I need to do right now is this is a new init method for my player2 class but I need to inherit this init method from the player class and to do that I'll use the keyword super dot init and our init let's not forget the underscores like so and I'll pass in the name and the health from the player class and this is a comma name comma the health from the player class and next I'll just add in the new variable I created so I'll say self.controller equals controller so by doing this I'm actually overriding the base class let's create a class for our enemy so I'll just say enemy and the enemy is going to inherit from the player as well and I'll pass in the same init method init that wasn't so hard was it and I'll pass in the self keyword and pass in the name the health and then I'll pass in another one called the status so I want to check if the enemy is idle or the enemy is attacking and I'll just use my super keyword so that I can uh, inherit from the parents class init method which has the name and the health and then here I'll actually add the status so I'll say self dot status is equal to status because this is the only new thing I'm adding right here for the enemy class now a nice quick tip is Python returns a copy of the function already that's why we're using super so it will return a copy you don't need to you know keep doing that for each instance of the enemy you create you'll have access to the you know name and health automatically another thing is if you look at the super you don't need to pass in the self keyword again because the copy already exists and you're borrowing 
or inheriting from the parent class's uh, copy. This might actually be confusing at first, but uh, trust me, the more you work with it, the, you actually gain more understanding, especially when it comes to writing the code. So let's create our instances. And here I'll create a uh, instance called Mario, which is from the player class. And I'll pass in the name. I'll call that Mario. You can actually call the variable anything you want. And I'll pass in the uh, value of 10 for Mario. So, uh, yeah, so I actually have two variables. This one is the automatic method uh, instance that is actually going to be created for each of the instances of the class. So uh, it needs to have that self keyword. So I'll create a second player, Luigi. So I'll say player two, and I'll pass in the player name. So that's Luigi, his health, I'll say nine. And then the controller status, I'll say connected. And next, what I want to do is to create the uh, enemy. So I'll create a variable called Koopa, which is going to be an enemy. And it's actually borrowing the name and health from the player class. So I'll pass in the name. I'll just call him a Koopa Trooper. And then the health of Cooper, I'll just set it to two. Because it's actually a least enemy. So let's save this and run this. So we actually right here in uh, line 19, we have an error. It says uh, enemy in it is missing one required argument and it's missing the status. So the reason why it's missing the status is because I just passed in two arguments. It accepts three, so it needs a status. And I'll just say the enemy is active. So let's save that and run it as well. And now we can actually see we don't have any issues with our uh, program. All right, so that's a quick tip on how you can uh, inherit a class and then override the base methods that are built into the class using the super keyword. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You can throw any questions. You can ask me any questions on the channel. I'll be free to respond, and you can have access to all these codes, and you can play around with them. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next lesson.